Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel and thanks for joining us. In this video, we are going to share some ideas about moving to C17 and related questions you might encounter during a technical interview. Moving to C17. There were lots of new features added in C17 and we want to focus on a few ideas for two specific reasons. The first is what should you be aware of as you're migrating from 11 or 14? The other reason is because these topics make very interesting interview questions. It is one thing to know how to use a unique pointer, but do you know if it can be captured in a lambda expression? Can you define what a move-only type is? During a code review or an interview, could you explain the exact difference between const expr and if const expr? In order to use the features of C17, you will need a modern compiler such as Clang 6 or GCC 7. If you're using MSVC, you must update to at least version 2017 15.8.1 and on Apple platforms, Xcode version 10.0 or newer is required. If your build system uses CMake, you will need to move to at least version 3.8. Older versions of CMake do not have the full feature set for C17 support. Since we are not lawyers, we suggest that before updating your tool chain and moving to C17, you should ensure the vendors for all third-party libraries have migrated. Ask them if their libraries have successfully compiled with C17 turned on. Debugging a vendor issue or finding out you need to wait several months for them to fix something could seriously impact your migration project. One of the more powerful and modern C++ abstractions is the addition of smart pointers. The STD unique pointer class was added in C++11 as a replacement for STD auto pointer. If your code is still using AutoPointer, and you are using a compiler which supports C++11 or newer, please stop and replace it with STD Unique Pointer. As of C++17, STD AutoPointer was removed from the standard. The purpose of STD Unique Pointer is to manage a resource, typically a heap allocated object. By design, Unique Pointer will clean up the resource or deallocate the object it was managing when the lifetime of the pointer ends. It is important that no other code clean up the resource, since the Unique Pointer owns the object it points to. STD Unique Pointer is a data type which is movable, but not copyable, and this is often referred to as a move-only type. Because it is not copyable, only one unique pointer at a time is allowed to point to a particular resource. When creating a unique pointer, we suggest using the std make unique function, which was added in C14. This function allocates memory for an object on the heap, calls the appropriate constructor, and then returns a unique pointer to the new object. Since unique pointer is such a useful data type, it would seem like having a container which holds unique pointers might be convenient. But is this allowed? Can a container hold a move-only data type? What happens to the elements when a container changes size? Remember, a unique pointer cannot be copied. It turns out, all of the standard containers support move-only types. However, not all of the methods for a given container can be called. For example, if the container has methods for copy assignment or a copy constructor, calling them will be a compiler error. In order to add a move-only element, like a unique pointer, std move must be used to transfer the smart pointer into the container. Once a unique pointer is moved into a container, ownership of that resource is transferred to the container. This is by design and simply something you need to be aware of. Here is an interesting question you might encounter during a C++ interview. Can you capture a unique pointer in a Lambda expression? Being able to capture data means the Lambda expression can use values which were defined in the surrounding scope. 
Until C++14, there was no way to capture a move-only data type. The generalized Lambda Capture syntax added in C++14 gives developers the mechanism to do what is called a move capture. Since we have a move-only type, we need to move the value from the outer scope into the capture clause of the Lambda expression. Please remember that once the move capture has taken place, the original variable will have lost its value and should not be referred to in code following the Lambda expression. In the case of a unique pointer, after the move occurs, the original pointer will be set to null pointer. So let's take a look at the family of keywords related to const. Someone could use only these questions for an entire interview and learn a good deal about the applicant. Take a moment to consider which of these are valid, which ones mean the same thing, and do any of these have no meaning in C++17? The first item on our list is const, and a good definition is that some code promises not to change some thing. In an interview, probably the worst answer you could give is, the value will not change. This is too vague and not descriptive enough. When const is part of a pointer or method declaration, there are multiple locations where const can appear, and each one will indicate a different entity which cannot be changed. Sometimes const means the return value cannot be changed by the caller. Other times const indicates the method cannot change any data members in the class. Our takeaway here is that const on its own does not say what cannot change. You need the full context. The const expert keyword is a bit different. It asks the compiler to evaluate something at compile time. This keyword is part of the declaration, but does not apply to the data type. Const expert is just a request and does not actually force evaluation at compile time, more of a strong suggestion. Usually the compiler will do so, but the standard does not actually require evaluation at compile time, at least not with C++17. Is it valid to mark an entity as both const expert and const? The answer is yes. Given a simple variable declaration, the const expert requests the evaluation to happen at compile time, and the const says the value cannot be changed. A const expert method has an interesting story. There was a change in the standard between 11 and 14. In C++11, adding const expert to a method silently added a const qualifier, meaning the members of the class cannot be modified. In C++14, this behavior changed, and the implicit const qualifier is not assumed. This is an area where you will need to review your code. Now, if you want a const expert method to also be const qualified, both keywords are required. There is one other part of const expert developers frequently miss. It is the confusion between the keyword const expert and the idea of a constant expression. Const expr is not just shorthand for a constant expression. The expression 2 plus 3 is a constant expression since the answer can be computed at compile time and the sum remains constant. The keyword const expr is not required for this evaluation to happen at compile time. These two lines of code differ only in the ordering of the keywords. We prefer the order const expr static const, but both of these declarations have the same meaning. The example shows a declaration of a method which can be called at compile time because of the const expr keyword. The static keyword means the method can be called without having an instance of the class. The const parses as part of the return type so this method will return a const reference to an int. A very cool and significant feature added in C++17 is the support for if const expr. Occasionally, you might hear someone say const expr if, 
And this is not valid code. This happens because const expert if was the original name for the compile time if statement. The name was reversed early on, but unfortunately, many people did not update their vocabulary. So what is a compile time if? Because the keyword const expert is used with the if statement, the condition must be something which is known at compile time. The result, as with any other if, is that one branch will be taken. Since the compiler knows which branch will be taken, it only generates the code for the branch which is used. The really interesting question with if const expert is whether the code in the branches which are not taken need to be well-formed code which compiles. It turns out this is actually a good interview question. When the if const expert statement appears in the body of a template, the discarded branches do not need to be well-formed. However, an if const expert in a non-template function or method will require that all branches must compile, even though only one branch will be used. For more information about the Copper Spice project, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us an email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back in a few weeks for our next video.